Today we're going to take a look at some vintage PC accessories including the diskette holder styled to look like a CRT monitor from JHT Imports, the PC radio from Ashton Products, the anti-static brush from MediaMate, and the TechVac from Park Avenue. First is the CRT monitor styled diskette holder. I think I paid a dollar for this. Easy to operate, push to access, push to store, unique disk storage system with spring-loaded access. Holds up to 15 three and a half inch diskettes. Swivels on pedestal because it's made to look like a CRT monitor. Brand new in the packaging. Distributed by JHT Imports, Minneapolis, Minnesota, made in China. So here we go. Brand new in the package. And there is your diskette holder. Inside is the tilt swivel base. So uh, just set it up here. Let's see, I guess it slides on. quality in the moldings is not that great. There we go. Almost looks like it has like a, a disk drive or something in there. Looks a little bit more just than just like a monitor. But there you go, there's your uh, diskette holder. Open it up. I don't know how convenient this is going to be because, well, there's your spring loading, but you can't really see the titles of your discs, and the door gets in the way, too. I assume I'm putting these in the right way. So, I mean, yeah, it looks like a monitor. It's kind of neat like that, but you can't really tell what your discs are that you're putting in. Once you just memorize their location, it may be according to the color of the disc. Oh, do they sort of snap in? Or is... Oh, you sort of, you, you can latch them in like that. I didn't notice that. Okay. That makes it a little bit more interesting. I don't know, can you put them in backwards? I don't see that why that wouldn't work. Yeah, either way works. So, kind of a neat novelty. Yeah, I guess you can, if you look, if you put your labels uh, towards the top of the disc, you can sort of see a little bit of peeking in there what they are. <laughs> but they tend to just pop out on their own. Because of the flimsy plastic. So there's your diskette holder peeking through the cover. You can kind of see that it's not really a monitor. But it does tilt and swivel. On the bottom it says made in China. It has some registration number there. But these are actual rubber feet. So it looks pretty high quality. Let's see how easy it is to pop one disc out. See they, they get in the way of the lid. That's the main design flaw. I mean, yeah, they kind of spring load out, but then it's kind of clumsy to get it out. Because it, it gets stuck on the lid. So, interesting novelty item from, I guess, the 90s. Next is the PC radio from Ashton Products. Beyond this sticker residue, it says FM reception, adjustable volume control, auto scan function, and battery powered. Obviously styled to look like a desktop computer from the 90s. This miniature replica of a desktop personal computer is actually an FM radio, or it says a FM radio. Tune or scan to your favorite stations by simply pressing the mouse. Adjustable volume control for enjoyable listening, powered by three AA batteries not included. It has a one-year limited warranty. 
made in China. I like how they actually put the vents in the back of the monitor. And so that's about it. Let's dig into the packaging here. All right, I think that should be enough to get into it. There's the computer and the mouse and the keyboard. I like this attention to detail they put on the keyboard. They actually labeled all the keys and they even got most of them right except the backslash they put a regular slash on. Even has little screws in it. And the computer itself the monitor swivels but does not tilt. Uh, I don't know if that, that might actually be metal. The speaker grill. There's the volume control. So uh, that's actually a pretty nice uh, little model of a desktop computer. Just these look more like slimline five and a quarter inch drive than three and a half inch drives because the, the aspect ratio is not quite correct. Then there's the mouse with the scan and reset buttons for the radio. A little bit of yellowing there. That's the only place I can see the yellowing. And even has a little external antenna. And the keyboard just slides in the front like that. And, oh, instruction manual. It says install the batteries, fully extend the antenna, and so on and so forth. And this little thing says imported by DS Max, Richmond Hill, Ontario. It's supposed to run on uh, AA batteries. The bottom it says PC Auto Scan FM Radio, made in China, supposedly comp complies with FCC rules. Here's where the batteries go. Okay, batteries are in. Not all of the same brand, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, let's set up our little desktop PC here and turn on our radio. Okay, it's my own station. Next. Get static. Oh, it's semi-legible. Okay, maybe I really need to extend that antenna fully. Okay, the antenna is fully extended. Next. Come on. I think that's WNYC. More driving, and that necessarily means more emissions. And you know, while that's not necessarily surprising, I think it's really when you then take those same trends. Yeah, that sounds pretty bad, but what do you expect? So it's picking up plenty of stations, but they all sound terrible. They all sound very sibilant and distorted. See the full line of Sprinter and Metro's cargo and passenger vans at Rally Motors. Financing as low as 0% on select models. Visit Rally Motors in Roslyn or go to rallymotors.com. Sprinter and Metro's commercial vehicle. Okay, because I But depending upon the question to be executed, some voices are naturally more profitable. Some essays, the poet and the 
Didn't we hear that station already? Okay, yes, it is pouring outside, but uh, it's, at least it looks neat, even if it's not really that good to use as a radio. They did an excellent job of capturing all the details of a 1990s desktop computer, so I think that's pretty neat. Next, we have the anti-static brush from MediaMate. One touch, hazardous static is gone. I like how they show a IBM Model M keyboard there. One touch grounds the static and build up in you. Protects your hardware and data from static electricity. Has anybody actually had their hardware or data damaged or lost by static electricity? I mean, I've had situations where I had a spark when I touched like part of a computer, but it never really seemed to affect anything. Ow. Okay, that was a demonstration of static electricity. So before you handle any sensitive piece of computer gear, or in my case, a bloody mouse, you should touch a plugged in power supply in order to get the static charge to ground out. Just a brush sweeps away static and dust from your equipment. And that, that actually almost looks like natural bristles, not just plastic ones. And it comes with a coiled cable and a clip to uh, connect to a grounded part of your computer. It's by Hunt Data Products, Laredo, Texas, made in Mexico. Doesn't have a date, but I'm guessing mid 90s. Hopefully, this packaging is easier to open than the rest. I think I just have to uh, cut this little part here, and then we should be in. Okay. Yeah, I don't know that these feel like natural natural bristles to me. But I don't know how just grabbing this is going to dissipate the static unless you grab. I mean, there's a little bit of metal there, but this is plastic. And I think that's just a sticker. That's not like a metal plate on there. I don't, I don't know how good this is actually dissipating static and there's that alligator clip to connect to your computer well, well at least it's useful as a brush so I booted up my Tandy 1000 SX and I blew a bunch of dust onto the CRT with the static cling maybe you can hear that it's all stuck to the CRT and I managed to find a grounded part of the case I could clip that to, which is not that easy on this system because it has a plastic case. I managed to connect it to one of the retaining screws of the monitor connector and that is grounded. I tested it with my multimeter. There you can see all the dust that's stuck to the monitor and on the little bezel there. So let's put this brush to the test. I mean, it's it's working, but I don't know if it is necessarily working any better than a regular brush would. Got rid of the dust, but a regular brush would have done that just fine, too. Oh, no more static cling. So I guess that did help. So I guess it works as advertised. Just this cord, this cable's a little bit too short. and. I guess it would stretch out after time, but uh, I don't know. I guess this one is okay. Finally, we have the Tech Vac from Park Avenue. Another very 90s PC and keyboard in the photo there. And they show all the accessories that come with it. Cleans places regular vacuums can't reach. Deal for removing dust from computer keyboards, typewriters, fax machines, cameras, and more. Reusable dust bag. High-tech styling. Two AA batteries not included. 
I do not have high hopes for this because any kind of vacuum, first of all, that runs on two AA batteries is not going to be very powerful. And these keyboard type vacuums generally don't work well or at all sometimes. It says made in Taiwan, 1994, E&B Giftware, Mount Vernon, New York. Design patent pending. Get it out. There's the little manual. Okay. There's some dust in this bag here we can uh, try to vacuum up. I don't know, is this just for carrying it or is that the bag that dust goes into? Oh, I guess this is the, the dust bag. So, uh. Okay. Let's put in those AA batteries. Really using up a lot of that three hours of this light bulb's life. Okay. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. I don't think I have it assembled all the way, though. Yeah, you're supposed to put this uh, doohickey in there. Uh, what is that, just sort of stuff it inside this little uh, handle? I actually just fixed a regular vacuum today. Sucked up a rag and got stuck in the motor. Okay. Yeah, that doesn't sound good. And I'm not feeling any suction. Maybe just the tiniest bit. <laughs> if you push too hard on the button, it squeals. And you can tell that motor is not going nearly fast enough to really have any kind of suction. Maybe we can at least brush the dust around with this little attachment. Okay, can you see that dust on there? I don't know if that's the brush doing all that or just if the vacuum is actually doing anything. Let me try another attachment here. Yeah, that has a little bit of suction, but not much. It's mostly just making noise and moving the dust around rather than picking it up. I mean, it, it's... You can't even hear the motor straining if I block it entirely. It strains more if I just push the button too hard. <laughs> there you can see the motor. Yeah, this is another toy that really doesn't work at all. Not gonna get any dust out of that. So that has been my show and tell of four vintage PC accessories. Do they do that in school anymore? Show and tell? I don't know. These are probably more useful just as decorations rather than their intended purpose. Well, this is the only really useful item of the bunch. It actually did reduce the static of my CRT monitor. And just as I suspected, this is a complete gimmick. Totally useless. There is no such thing as blinker fluid.